Blade instructs T'Challa to have the city spin up its mass translocation drives and bring him his prize. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> you read it like it's not a science textbook, Todd. <laughs> I need to do mine again. <laughs> Aboard the impossible city. Now the layer of the Lord of uh, okay. Let me get in a better spot. Let me get in a little affectation on this thing. Let me get in a better spot. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Welcome to Tal Capes. I'm Cody Nestor. He's Todd Heal. What's up, everybody? And today we're here to talk about Marvel's big vampire event series, Blood Hunt number three. Before we get into specifics, here's the story for issue three. Led by Blade, a group of vampires used the dark force to blot out the sun, creating an eternal night and unleashing violence upon the world. Blade and the Blood Coven, a group of superpowered vampires, also launched an attack on the Avengers, capturing several members of the team, transforming Black Panther into a vampire and seizing control of the impossible city, the Avengers Orbital Headquarters. The remaining Avengers allied themselves with Dracula and Blade's vampire hunting daughter, Bloodline. Along with Tiger, Hunter's Moon, and Spider-Man, the group made their way to Doctor Strange's sanctum to seek his aid. Strange remained trapped in his astral form, his physical body having been grievously wounded by Blade during their earlier attack. But before the heroes could formulate a plan, Spider-Man began transforming into a vampire. Aboard the Impossible City, now the lair of the Lord of All Vampires, Blade, T'Challa reports to Blade that he has found his prize buried deep beneath the earth in Wakanda, where it has laid since the fall of Atlantis. Blade instructs T'Challa to have the city spin up its mass translocation drives and bring him his prize. In the Sanctum Sanctorum, newly vampirized Miles Morales Spider-Man attacks his fellow superheroes. Vision wraps his arm around Miles in an attempt to stop him but receives a charged electric blast for his trouble. Doctor Strange ensnares Spider-Man with the Crimson Bands and uses the Eye of Agamotto to show Miles the truth, bringing Miles back to his senses. Doctor Strange tells Miles he is not alone and that Blade came to us as a friend and then he struck. And now I also bear his curse. Our heroes gather themselves and Bloodline, daughter of Blade, asks who the he is that's been doing all of this. Dracula informs her that she must strike down her father, the new Lord of Vampires. Eric Brooks' blade has loosened his legions of the night all over the world. He has engineered the darkening of the skies. He has broken the mighty Avengers, and now Brielle is all that's left to stop him, which is why her father has loosed the blood hunt upon her. For Brielle is his bloodline, only her hand can strike him down. During an argument between the Midnight Mission and Dracula, Brielle takes the opportunity to run away as Spider-Man and Dracula give chase. Dr. Strange reveals he has some inkling of where to go for aid with the Dark Force. The Midnight Mission have a plan to deal with the vampires. They will raise an army they cannot kill, cannot turn, and cannot terrify. But Hunter's Moon lets the heroes know they need one more for their party. This leaves the Avengers to handle Blade and his blood coven. Lady Clea transports Hunter's Moon, Tigra, and our mystery party members somewhere far away as the Avengers discuss how to draw out Blade. Captain Marvel directs Iron Man to set a broadcast. Sam Wilson, Captain America, the icon, broadcasts a message of hope to the world. Things are bad, I know. Like all of you, we've been hurt, been bled, have lost. We've been here before and we're still here. The world has seen evil time and time again. Aliens, monsters, tyrants, madmen. Those who would take our homes, our freedom, our lives. Every time we, the people of planet Earth, told them no. If you want our home, you'll have to fight for it. If you want our world, you'll have to take it. If you want our blood, you'll have to pay for every drop. And if you take our lives, we will be avenged. Enraged by Captain America's broadcast of hope, Blade informs Black Panther plans have changed and to retarget the mass translocation drives. Since the Avengers will not simply lie down and die, Blade will drop his great prize, which has not seen the sky since the days of old Atlantis, upon their city so that it might be their tombstone. And that is how issue number three of Blood Hunt ends with the Temple of the First Blasphemy. So, Todd, what did you think of issue three? What did you like? What did you maybe not like? You know, uh, not a very action-heavy oriented issue here. You get a lot of just our, our main group of heroes kind of separating off into smaller groups, kind of tackling certain aspects of the problem. You get that nice rally speech from Cap. 
You know, to be honest, uh, this one we read was not a red band issue. Uh, you know, we know blood and guts. I kind of missed the blood and guts. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Definitely a slower pace. Yeah, I think a slower pace. I think um, still, though, like, um, you know, I wouldn't call this like, this definitely moves the story along. It's not like it's filler or anything. Yeah. But, like, yeah, definitely not as action oriented or whatever. But I still think you get some strong character moments. This is kind of everybody's, this is like kind of the pivot point. We only have like two issues left. So like the injured, the injures, the Avengers take a beating in the first issue. They're kind of licking their wounds through the second. And this is their kind of like pivot back to like yeah. being on their front foot and like kind of taking the battle to blade to right. the blood coven. And I think you get some good character moments out of that, especially I think the highlight here of the issue for me is caps like broadcast of hope. Yes. I think it was a good moment for Sam Wilson. I think it was a good moment for like, you know, this, this version of Captain America as well. So, like, I think it was, again, it's not super heavy action, but I still think it was, like, pretty, I think, pretty strong issue, I would say, overall. Like, right. still from a from a storytelling perspective that you're actually getting a little bit more story and a little bit more set up to. Because not only did the Avengers have a plan, uh, what is it, Midnight Mission, they have kind of their plan to go uh, – with some mystery person we've yet to see true to yeah. like kind of they're doing their thing they have a plan to like raise an army up you got the avengers their plan is to draw blade out to take him out yeah and then we have another group who am i forgetting we have one more other group who is it i'm forgetting was that spider-man and dracula that was going after his daughter yeah i guess that would technically be the last okay. group is just spider-man and dracula out there <laughs> looking uh, looking for uh brielle um any theories about what the the temple, the first blasphemy, <clears throat> what that what that might contain, what that might be about? I looked, I looked, try to go through the Marvel wikis and stuff. I don't see that reference. So I think it's a new creation for the story. Any? Yeah, you know, honestly, actually, I did a little bit of deeper digging, and I found out that this temple is actually just a looped recreation of the first time that I saw titties in the movie Porky's back in the early eighties. That's why the, the name first blasphemy. <laughs> Uh, I didn't know if I was going to throw that in or not. <laughs> but but I, you <laughs> Just you on a loop watching titties yeah. for the first time yeah. in Borky's As one. Hence the name, the first yeah. blasphemy, because, yeah. you know, those titties set me down a path that... Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it set me down the wrong path. So, obviously, my, you know, maybe too hum too much humor on the aside here. Uh, I don't really know what this is. That may possibly a new recreation for this series. <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, I I'm hoping that it contains something cool. I hope there's something that comes back because I mean it just gets dropped. I guess in New York, right? Like just right on top of everybody. Yeah, I don't I don't know what it is. Again, I couldn't find any reference to it. Like, but to be fair, I didn't look that hard, right? And I didn't know I didn't know though it contains your first <laughs> time you ever saw titties back in the seventies. Folks, that was my that was my bad try to influence some comedy on my part. <laughs> Um, after reading issue number three, I was kind of left like feeling like I wanted more of this. Like, I don't feel like, you know, it's a five comic event series. Like I, I just, I want more, not that I want more from the story. I think the story is, you know, I don't think it's lacking. I think it's delivering. I just want more of like what's going on and more of this universe. Like, right. are we, are we missing out by not reading all these 50 some tie-ins, Todd? I mean, it's possible, which, I mean, if, if there's a lot of major stuff happening in tie-ins, I think it's kind of a dick move. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> because to me, in my past experiences, you know, tie-ins were just maybe like little asides from like your main series. Yeah. Your main series. Like, oh, your... what is Hulk doing yeah. during all this? How right? is this affecting the uh, Spider-Woman universe? Right, you know, yeah. whatever. And your main, you know, meat and potatoes was in your series, but this only being five issues. It kind of leads me to believe that we're missing some stuff. Yeah, am I, mean, I backtracking? Hell, hell no, no. <laughs> no, I'm not backtracking to the times. Yeah, I guess it's just more of like I'm invested in this story, so I kind of want more out of it. I don't know if the yeah. tie-ins would give me any context that I don't really have. I don't think it would. I think it would just like again, it would just look at Wolverine slicing through vampires, like it would right. just be something like that, or how are the X-Men dealing with vampires all over Westchester, or Genosha, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, or Krakoa or whatever, whatever the fuck they're at now. Uh, yeah. So I, I think it's probably a lot of that and it's not worth backtracking, but I just like, I guess it's kind of a credit. Like I don't, this is not like a, this is not like a mind blowing series. Like I don't think this is yeah. going to be, this is not going to be like top 10 best 
crawl, not crossover, but, you know, big summer event comics. I don't think this will ever be like top 10 for any of those, but I think it's like pretty solid and I like yeah. the premise and it's interesting. Like it might not be an all time great storyline. So I guess that's why I feel like I just kind of want more. Right. Like I want to see yeah. more. I want to know what's going on and I want more, more issues to this, but you know, we're just kind of getting a five. So like, yeah, like I just kind of felt like that after this, like I want, I want more of this universe of what's going on right now. I want to see other stuff, but I don't want to have to read 40 other books. Yeah. Cause you kind of get that feeling like, cause well, in our, in our openings, uh, panels you got blade talking to the chala and the chala's already in wakanda you know found what he was looking for yeah you kind of feel of like there was a issue out there somewhere where like you know a vampirized t'challa like fought a bunch yeah. of his own home probably own people. in his own book yeah. yeah which you know i mean you could have easily maybe done like a two or three panel recap here i don't know yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying, yeah. I mean, there's probably, in Black Panther this month, he was probably, you know, the last issue of Black Panther was probably him going back to Wakanda and finding that and probably having some fight. Right. Who knows, yeah, but it's just, like, that's the problem with it. Like, if I knew it was such not such a daunting task to read something, I mean, I guess the argument was, like, well, you can only read the... You don't have to read everyone. You could be like, if you like X Men, read X Men. You know what I mean, <laughs> right? If you like Black Panther, read Black Panther. But yeah. like, I just wish the list was like, we got like five issues of this, and they said, the to add more context to the story. You should read like X Men, and we're doing some cool stuff with this. And X Men, we're doing some cool stuff with this. Maybe there's like ten tie-ins to read, mm -hmm. something like that. Like then I would maybe I would maybe give it a chance, but like when you say there's like forty some, there's way more. And tie -ins. which ones are more important? Yeah. Like if you gave it only to some, you would know that there was like if there was not forty and there was only five books that this was like really the story was being told in. Like you know again like Black Panther he has a big role, so we'll tell some more of the story that you don't see in issue three. Yeah. We'll tell that story in Black Panther's book, not. You know, I need to read like the century number six. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean. Like, I got you. make yeah. it five series, like five books or ten tie-ins for these specific series that are involving characters that are either super popular or directly involved in the story and and show what's going on in between. Right. But when there's like fucking forty tie-ins, too nah, much. You can, it's way too you can much. Suck me. <laughs> <laughs> Suck me, Marvel. Yeah, because I'm not doing all that. So I just, again, I think it's less of a, it's not that the story's lacking or I'm feeling like I'm, I've am i lost context. It's just really more like I just want more. I think this is a cool premise, and I like the dark, you know, kind of mystic side of this that we're seeing, and I just want to kind of see more. Yeah. I want to I want to see Wolverine slice up some some people or whatever, but or some vampires, but I don't, I'm not seeking it out. <laughs> right. I'm not, it needs to come to me. It needs to come it to me. It needs to come to me. Find us. Yeah, find us, Wolverine. <laughs> um, any theories about how all this shakes out, Todd? Is it really Blade? Is he possessed? Uh, has he been replaced and held captive? Like, what is there? Is there a big bad behind the scenes that we've yet to yet to see? I'm still not totally convinced that this is, you know, possessed or otherwise. Is this is either Blade proper or Blade in his right mind? I still feel like something's going on there with him. As far as the big bad theory, I don't really honestly know a lot of major players Marvel horror-wise, so I'm thinking it's maybe leaning towards maybe somebody we haven't seen before. Like a new character. New like character, the Blood Coven was kind of created. A lot right. of things seem to be created for this new, so yeah, I've seen some theories that people talk about like it might be, you know, the villain might be tied sort of to Atlantis. Not that it might be an established person, but it might be yeah. something, somebody that has roots in Atlantis that even if it's newly created, because like you get that the temple was like, you know. Was an old Atlantean uh, temple. Right, that right. kind of stuff. Like it's tied into Atlantis, so you might get some tie in there with whoever the, the big bad is. I My guess is there is some kind of a big bad behind this. I don't think we're seeing Blade's heel turn. Like, I don't I don't think he's like, you know, I don't think he's in, if he's not in his right mind, I don't think this is his, his doing. I think there's something else behind this. Yeah, so definitely. I'm still interested after three issues. I still, like, I'm still definitely invested in this. I want to see how it goes again. Is this going to be a top 10 comic book, you know, event ever all time? No, but I still, I still think it's pretty solid so far. Yeah. Um, Todd, what, uh, what about your review score here? Give us your review score and your final thoughts for uh, Blood Hunt number three. 
If I'm being honest, this was kind of a little bit of an odd issue for me. For a series that's only five issues long, I kind of feel like I maybe took the foot off the gas a little bit here. Mm, right. I kind of, I'm kind of missing my blood and guts and my fights. <laughs> that's Fair. just, that's just eight year old me manifesting itself, probably. Uh, I, like I say, I still think, you know, we're at three or five, so we're ramping up here pretty quick towards the end. I'm still invested. I want to see what happens. I think my overall score, I think I've dropped back just a little. I'm going to go back to a six. I think this was a decent issue. And like I say, it wasn't just filler. It wasn't just a throw-in. It does move the story forward. We just don't get a lot of action-wise here. I think that's fair. I'm still gonna stick. I'm gonna stay with. A, I'm gonna stay with a seven. I still okay. think it's good. Um, mostly, if you took out the like two or three pages of what Cap speech, I would probably give this a five or a six and say it's like decent to mediocre. Yeah, it was. I, a good I speech. really like the Cap speech. You know, um, I've not really read a lot of the Sam Wilson Captain America stuff. Like, you know, I, when I was reading continuously, it was obviously Steve Rogers and that kind of thing. And like, um, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, the the MCU's Captain America right now. Like I, I never right. really cared for Anthony Mackie as an actor. So like to see a good Sam Wilson portrayal here in the comics and like getting a yeah. good getting a good Captain America moment, giving that good hope speech. Like I, I kinda really dug that. So that's why normally I would be at a six if you wouldn't if you took out those pages, I would say six. But for that I'm gonna say that alone give me another point for it because I really enjoyed that part. Yeah. So but yeah, if you're not if you're not been reading this and you're interested, I would say definitely, you know, pick it up, you know, digitally or whatever if you can track down the red band version we kind of think both wish we'd have bought issue one red band because i don't think it's available digitally yeah and you know it's got that the, the panel at the end is different where dr strange is basically disemboweled we, we come to find out i'll definitely say if this gets like an oversized hardcover or, or an omnibus and there is a red band edition i think i'll pick it up <laughs> yeah for sure like i said it's not going to be a top 10 story of all time like don't I'm not trying to blow this up and say well, this is a this is must read stuff like no it's just good and solid if you got five dollars burning a hole in your pocket every couple of weeks when this releases i think pick it up you know honestly uh, anything else for Blood Hunt number three, Todd? Yeah, I mean, something that's kind of related, but maybe not totally related. You know, I've kind of let slip my first blasphemy. You know, was yours also Porky's 80s titties? <laughs> I, I, don't think it, <laughs> I don't think it was Porky's, let us, let us know what your first blasphemy was in yeah, the comments yeah, below. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What was your temple, the first blasphemy? Did folks, I, put did, it in the comments. Was that a bridge too far? Yeah. Should I tone back my, you know, my old man <laughs> humor? any of this make it into the final cut? <laughs> Is Cody going to cut that whole entire sequence? <laughs> he probably should. Tune in. <laughs> Tune in to see. <laughs> All right. I think we'll call that a wrap. That's it for this episode. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. Feel free to send us an email. Get in touch with us on social media. The information is down at the bottom of the screen. Tile Caves will return. We want to thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye, guys. See you, guys.